What's up, everybody? It's Death I Bring, your friendly neighborhood convict here. Uh, ex-con. I am definitely not a convict anymore. That life is behind me. Anyways. But I have done my share of crimes, my friend. And today is going to be about, uh, this episode is going to be about prison slang, okay? Lingo. What people say in prison, the phrases they say, and I'm going to go down a list of 50 different phrases, and I'm going to tell you what I have never heard in my life, which some of these are just hilarious, okay? And some of them I actually have heard numerous times, okay? So, I found this on uh, Google, I just typed in prison lingo, and it brought up 50 terms. So, I'll probably make it a two-part episode, I don't know, depending on how long this might be. Might stop halfway through and do the other part another day. Anyways, so let's get right up into it, man. Prison lingo. First phrase on this Google search is, number one, all day. Okay, all day. That's a phrase. Never heard that one before. They consider that to be a life sentence, as in doing all day. Never heard that before. I just say, hey, he's a lifer. He's doing, he's doing a whole bid, okay? Uh, number two, all day and night. Life without parole. Never heard that one before either. We just say, typically say, hey, he's got life. He ain't got no parole. All day and night. Well, how am I going to even say that? Man, I heard that guy's doing all day and night. Never heard that in my life. If there's, any, hey, if there's anyone out there that has heard some of these that I haven't heard, please let me know in the comments so I can understand if it's just a, you know area type thing because I haven't heard these things ever in my life. Uh, number three, backdoor parole. To die in prison. I've never heard that before in my life. I'm, I've heard it, I think, in a different way, but I've never heard it by backdoor parole. Uh, I just say he's going to die in prison. You know? I've never heard that slang term before. Number four is beef. I have heard this. You know, I think everyone's heard this, even on the streets. A criminal charge, as in one caught a burglary beef in Philly. A problem with another convict, as in I have beef with that guy. We've all heard that one before, I do believe. I've heard that numerous times, and I don't think people really say that anymore. I have beef. Beef. Why? Beef is good. Why would you even consider that to be a bad thing? Anyways, number five, brake fluid. Psychiatric meds. I've never heard that, man. I've always called it psych meds. Brake fluid? Come on, why do you even need a nickname for that? Just say psych meds, man. You sound like an idiot if you say brake fluid. Number six, bug. A, per a prison staff member considered untrustworthy or unreliable. Uh, I've never heard the word bug, but I have, you know... Like I said, this is self-explanatory. I we when we say that guy is uh, untrustworthy or something like that, we just say it how it is. We don't. I've never heard the word phrase "bug." Hey, that that deputy is a bug, or uh, you know, I've never heard that. The only bug I heard of is like tapping wire phones and stuff like that. So number six is another one I've never heard. Number seven, bug juice. What is this, man? This is kind of funny, too. If you ever look up the street name for drugs, uh, I've never heard the names for drugs that they'd be, like, for ecstasy pills, disco biscuits. Who the heck says that, man? Anyways, number seven, bug juice. Intoxications or depressant drugs. Yeah, just call them downers. I don't know. I've never heard that before in my life. Eight, Buck Rogers time. What in the world is this, man? Early early to mid 20th century. A parole or release date so far away that is difficult to imagine. I don't know. I usually say, hey man, you ain't getting out until there's three doors on a microwave. Meaning, there won't never be three doors on a microwave. And if it is, it's going to be in the super future. Why would you need three doors on a microwave? So yeah. I always said that to the people that had a long time to do in prison. I'd say, man, you're, when you're going to get out, you know, there's going to be three doors on a microwave. It ain't happening. Anyways, Buck Rogers time. Ridiculous. If you've heard of that, please let me know. 
Number nine, bum beef. <laughs> hey, this stuff is ridiculous, man. Where do they get this? What, what inmates are telling them that this stuff is real? I have no idea. A false accusation charge on wrongful conviction. A bum beef. Never heard it. I just say I'm innocent. But aren't we all innocent in penitentiary? I wasn't. I got scales of justice weighing down to guilty because I was guilty. And I did my time. Anyways, number 10, Cadillac. An inmate's bunk. Oh, <laughs> yup. God, this is a good one. I had a Cadillac all the time, man. It was great. That was, and you should always go into jail or prison and look for the best mattresses possible. It's hard to come by. You only get it from being in there for a while and getting no guards and this, that, and the third, and they'll hook you up if you ask them. Cadillac, an inmate's bunk, also Cadillac job, an easy or an enjoyable inmate work assignment. Never heard of Cadillac job, but Cadillac is, uh, let's say I got a really nice mat. I'm like, man, my mat is a Cadillac. That's true. If you got a really nice mat, a long one, fluffy, they call it a Cadillac. Number 11, catch a ride. A request, a request to a friend to get you high. I've never heard that one before, anyone. If I, if, if someone's gonna ask, I just say, "Hey, man, look, can I can I tap that? Can I get up? Can I get up in that mix? Can I uh, can I jump in on that with you? I've never heard of uh, can I catch a ride? You know, I might. You know, I have no idea what that meant. Maybe a, if he said that to me, maybe I was thinking to take a bus ride to another penitentiary. Cell Warrior, an inmate that puts on a tough front or runs their mouth when locked in their cell, but is submissive or cowardly when interacting with other prisoners in the open. Uh, we never called them Cell Warriors. We used to call them, uh, uh, I can't remember what we used to call them, but there was another phrase. I think it was called Cell Boxers. or I can't remember, man. I really can't. But that is, there is a phrase out there for that, for people that like to talk stuff behind a locked door, but they're safe and they can't get touched, okay? So, let's move on. Number 13, chin check. Yeah, we've heard this numerous times. I've heard it numerous times. Ain't nothing wrong with giving someone a little chin check every once in a while. If you want to get hemmed up, make sure you do it the safe way. Anyways, chin check. To punch another inmate in the jaw to see if he'll fight back. I don't know if he's going to fight to see if he's going to fight back, but usually a chin check is just to, you know, get the ball going. Get this fight going. So that is a good term in prison. Uh, number 14, a cowboy. A new correctional officer. Cowboy spelled backwards is Yabwak, or a young obnoxious bastard we often con. Never heard that in my life. But it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Anyways, number 15, dance on the blacktop. Man, what is this, the freaking 40s? Come on, man. Or 90s? They used to say that. Uh, catch me on the blacktop. Let's go dancing on the blacktop. No, no. No, if anything, they'll say, hey, I'm going to catch you out in the yard. Or I'll get you. You know, I'll, I'll get you. You ain't got to say dance on the blacktop. This, is not, this ain't no novel. This ain't no fairy tale. Come on, man. That's just ridiculous. No one says that anymore. Uh, diesel therapy, 16. Never heard of it. What the heck are these people thinking, man? A lengthy bus trip or transfer to a faraway facility or even an incar incar incorrect destination used as punishment or to get rid of troublesome inmates. Diesel therapy. No, we just call that uh, we're, taking, we're taking a bus ride. Where's the bus? We're taking a bus. We're going on a bus ride. Okay, uh, let's go down to 17. Ding wing, a prisoner psychiatric unit. No, I just call that the psych block. Uh, you know, we don't call it ding wing. That's just ridiculous, man. And like I said, man, if y'all have ever heard of any of these and I said I haven't heard of them, please let me know, man. Cause this is maybe, you know, maybe it's an aerial, an area thing, you know. Uh, 18. I have heard this, and if I had a nickel for every time someone said it to me, I'd probably be rich. Because I, when I first went to prison, I was nosy, man. I always want to get up in the mix of things, okay? Number 18, dipping in the Kool-Aid. 
attempting to enter a conversation the person has no place in or is not welcome in. I told you to stay away from that type of stuff. Do not get into people's business. And unfortunately for me, my first mistake was I was always trying to get into people's business. I always wanted to hear the good stuff, you know what I mean? And that was the first bid when I went on it. And people told me all the time, hey, man, you need to stop dipping into Kool-Aid. It's usually the older head, older guys, man, because that's kind of an older term. And uh, that one's real. Number 18 is real. Number 19, doing the Dutch. No, never heard of it. Sounds whack. Or the Dutch act to commit suicide. Nah, man, the guy, we're just going to say he, he's trying to kill himself. Get him out of here. He's trying to kill himself. I don't want this pile on lockdown because this idiot tried to kill himself. Get him out of here. Number 20, dry snitching. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Dry snitching. This is probably, whew, this is probably number one in my list. I've heard this so many dang times in lockup. To inform another inmate indirectly by talking loudly about their actions or behaving suspiciously in front of correctional officers. Supply general information to officers without naming names. Okay. This is true. People that are scared to fight or uh, scared to get in any kind of business, they'll wait for the police to come around and they'll, and they'll start riling up and barking and talking all this smack right in front of the cops because they know damn well that nothing's going to happen. They're going to call up, put it on lockdown, and they're going to put everyone in their cells and they're going to take them out to the cell block. That's his easy way to get out and still look like he's being tough. Man, ain't nothing tough about getting all rowdy in front of the police, man. There's nothing tough about it. And then dry snitching. You can't just go in there and say, hey, uh, yeah, I seen who it is, and I don't want to say no names, but, um, you know, I've seen who it was. Who was it? Was he in cell number one, two, or three? And you'll be like, three. But I'm not going to say no names. Come on, man. You just said the name, man. There's only two people in cell three. Stop dry snitching. Stop it. Real word. Stop dry snitching. Anyways. Uh, that's number 20. Number 21, Duck, a correctional officer who reveals information about other officers or prison staff to inmates. I've never heard the phrase Duck, but there is, uh, there is informants that work for the state, you know, the uh, COs, correctional officers. They do, and they usually inform people on what they're in for. Let's say child molesters get into the block. Okay, I've seen COs correctional officers, deputies, they will tell the inmates that they are in there for child molesting because that is what they do. They they want to know and they will get at them. They hate them just as much as we do, okay? And they want you to get at them, okay? So they will put their business out there if you are in there for the wrong kind of crimes. Uh, tier, if you don't know what it means, it's the first floor, second floor, top tier, and uh, bottom tier. Number 24. Four-piece or four-piece suits. A full set of restraints composed of handcuffs, leg irons, and waist chain, and security boxes to cover the restraints and keyholes. I've never, I've never called it four-piece suits, okay? I just called it shackles, you know? They shackle you, hog tie it. So, I mean, that might be something done somewhere else, but I've never heard that before in my life. Number 25, we're halfway there, man. Grandma's. Or grandma's house, a prison gang headquarters or meeting place, or the cell of the gang of the gang leader. Grandma's. Why would they call it grandma's? Why don't they call it grandpa's? That's a little strange to me. Never heard that in my life. Let's keep it moving. Number twenty-six. Heat wave. The attention. We don't call it heat wave. We just call him. He's hot as firecracker. Uh, the attention brought to a group of inmates by the action of one or few. As in Joe and John got caught with contraband and now the whole tier is going through a heat wave. Never heard of that in my life. We just say those people are hot. They're, they're firecrackers. Got to keep away from them because they bring uh, the police into the block. They're just hot and suspect, man. Stay away from those people that are wild, man. You know, heat wave? No. Just call them hot. Hot boys. Number 27. Hold your mud. Never heard of this, man. I, like I said, half this... 90% of this list is just ridiculous. I've never heard of it. To resist informing or snitching even under threat of punishment or vi violence. Hold your mud. 
uh, I, don't, I've, I think I've heard, uh, you know, just uh, holding your own water, not mud. I've I heard hold your water, don't spill the water, you know, man, don't spill the beans. I've heard that. Anyway, 28, I got jigs. What is this? To keep lookout or watch for officers. I got jigs while you make the shank. Nah, never heard that before. Maybe someone could tell me if they heard that before. I just say I got lookouts everywhere, man. 29, in the car. I'm on a deal or plan. Uh, yeah, I've heard that before. I jumped in the car on numerous deals and plans. And that means literally like, uh, okay, we want to make a deal. We want to we wanna, uh, sell stuff to certain people and get our money back. Hey, I'm going to jump in that car and ride out with you, man. That's right. I've heard that one before. Uh, number 30, jacket. An inmate's information file the rap sheet. An inmate's reputation among other prisoners. Yes, I've heard jacket before. Uh, but it's usually talk, said by older people as well. A lot of these are older terms, I think, man. Like jacket, I never say that anymore. I just say rap sheet, you know. Uh, number 31, Jack Mac, canned mackerel or other fish available from pr prison commissary. Why are you gonna call it Jack Mac? Just call it mackerel, man. I've, I loved mackerel in there and, and mackerel patches. I just said mackerel. I want some fish. I want some mackerel. Thirty-two. Jack Rabbit parole to escape from a facility. No, nope, we just call it escape. Sorry, I've never heard Jack Rabbit Parole. I mean, why where are these guys why do these guys make these nicknames for? It's just ridiculous. Number 33, Juice Card. An inmate's influence with guards or other prisoners. He should have gone to the hole for that, but he's got a juice card with one of the guards. We don't say juice card. We just say Hey, he's in good with that guard, so he's good. You know, he ain't gonna get charged or nothing. That guard is cool. They're tight. He's in good with them. All right, juice car. Never heard of it. Number 34, we are making it down the list. I told you there's 50 of these puppies. Number 34, keister. To hide contraband in one's rectum. <laughs> also known as taking it in the hoop, taking it to the hoop, putting it in the safe, and packing the rabbit no when everywhere I've been when they say to stuff something in the rectum and hide it it's called suitcasing uh, we used to say oh he's about to suitcase this that and the third and bring it back from visitation suitcasing pretty self explanatory what do you do with suitcases you put stuff in it so keister never heard of it 35 kite a contraband letter. Yes, this is completely true in fact, and I think this might be country nationwide. Send in a kite. Uh, kites fly, man. They fly all over the place, all around town. You can fly it wherever you want. So kite is a good name for prison letters that are trying to be sent to other areas of the compound that you want to send word to. Most people that use kites are gang members, man. That's the only way that they can really participate in their... Uh, uh, whatever they're doing in other compounds in the facility, they got to send kites and send word uh, to other uh, areas in the compound. Number 36, monkey mouth. A prisoner who goes on and on about nothing. No, we just call those guys idiots. Number 37, monster. HIV, also known as the ninja. This is true. I remember I came home from doing a bid and I said the ninja star. Uh, this guy, That guy must have the ninja. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? Well, that's true. Uh, it means to have HIV, the monster, uh, the ninja star, the ninja. He's got that Kawasaki. He's got the monkey. That is all terms used in prison for HIV-infected people. So that is true. Number 38, Ninja Turtles. This is true, too, but only in one prison since I've, I mean, jail since I've been there. And that was Norfolk City Jail. Uh, ninja Turtles. Guards dressed as full riot gear, also known as hats and bats. Never heard of called hats and bats, but we have called them the uh, ninja, ninja turtles. That's right. They come out looking like little turtle shells. So that's true. 39, no smoke. To follow staff's orders without re resisting or causing any problem. As in, he let the guard search his cell with no smoke. Never heard that before. I just call it uh, without any problems.
I let him search my cell without any problems. Okay, number 40. On the man, there's a gnat in here. I don't know where these. It's winter time. These gnats are coming from everywhere, driving me nuts. Remind me of fruit flies, man. In a prison or jail, there's always fruit flies running around. Anyways, number 40. On the bumper, trying to get in the car. I've heard this before. Uh, you know, I'll jump in the car. You know, that means to go and ride out with anyone who's gonna do something. You know, make a deal or whatever. I'll hop in their car and we'll go buy it together. And there'll always be the guy on the bumper trying to get up in it. But we tell him, hey, man, get, get off our bumper. Let us take this car on our own, all right? Just go on. We'll get you on the next round. That's true. 41, on the river. Time spent in the Louisiana State Penitentiary, which is surrounded on three sides of the Mississippi River, as in he did 20 years on the river. Never heard that before, but then again, I've never been to Mississippi or Louisiana. 42, Peels. The orange jumpsuit uniforms worn by prisoners in some facilities. I think I've heard that before, but not enough to say I have. 43. Prison Wolf. An inmate who is normally straight on the outside and engages in sexual activity with men while incarcerated. We just call these guys undercovers, man. You know, uh... I think there's another term we used to say. Like I said, it's been a while since I've been locked up, so I don't even know. It's been a good three or four years since I've been in there. I can't remember what they used to call them people. But we just call them undercovers, man. You know, uh... So anyway, let's move on. Number 44, Rabbit. An inmate who has history of escape attempts or has plans to try to escape. Never heard that before in my life. Number 45, Ride With. To do favors for a fellow convict often including sexual ones, what, in exchange for protection, contraband, prison currency, or commissary items. Look, man, I say it all the time. You're going to ride with me or not. you can ride with me to the end or not. I say that to my, my wife, you know. It ain't got to be no sexual relation with uh, another man. You can ride with your homeboy wherever he goes, man, and always look out for him and not mean this stuff. But, uh, yeah, ride with. I've heard that plenty of times, but it doesn't it doesn't stand for some of the stuff that they're saying. And there's also people they're called riders, you know, that aren't a part of that gang, but they associate yourself with that gang because they ride with them wherever they go. Okay, so that's another piece of advice on the gang life. Uh, ride leg to be friendly with or suck up to staff in order to get favors. Now we just call them brown nosers, man. You know, we call them freaking just brown nosers, I guess. I don't know. Ride leg. Never heard of it. 47. Roadkill. <laughs> Cigarette butts picked up from roadsides by prison work crew. They're brought back to the facility and collected tobacco is rolled with toilet paper to smoke. Never heard of roadkill. Never. Ever. 48. Stainless steel ride. Death by lethal injection. Never heard that before. We just say death by lethal injection. Uh, 49. Three knee deep. To stab someone so that they're injured but not killed, usually as a warning. That I have heard. I have not seen it before. Um, actually, I haven't heard it uh, from in prison. I heard it from an ex-con that was from uh, Texas. He said it uh, when I was in a bar and we were talking about prison. He said it. And I was like, what does that mean, man? And he, was, and he told me. So I guess it is known in other places. And last but not least, and this is just a list that I'm reading off of Google, man. It's just hilarious. Uh, number 50, wolf tickets. To talk tough or challenge others without any intent to back it up with action or violence. As in, he's just selling wolf tickets. Yeah, I, I, there is a term for that. I think we just call them, uh, you know... Uh, bar talking, you know, bar fight. Oh, that's what we called it. <clears throat> People that talk a lot of stuff behind bars while they're locked up and they can't be touched and they're safe behind their locked door. We call them bar fighters. Yeah, bar fighters because they just talk and talk behind the bars, but they can't never fight for real and do nothing. So there you go. That's number five, 50. Never heard that before. You can call them bar fighters. You can talk, you know, all that. But, uh, 
I think I'm going to come up with my own list of phrases that I used in prison and jail and make another video on that sometime. But I hope you enjoyed the list of 50 slang words that Google listed. And uh, in my opinion, I wouldn't take any of these on Google. They probably had six that I heard out of 50. All right, I don't know where they get their sources from, man, especially when, the, when you type in street drugs. These parents are looking up these street drug names, and they don't, no one ever calls them these freaking street drug names, man. Anyways, until the next time, y'all, stay tuned. I'm dropping videos left and right like clockwork. Uh, the Real Prison Channel here, I'm, I'm really telling you straight from the heart, straight from my mind, and I'm going to give you honest advice on what to do and what not to do if you're going or if you just want to reminisce on prison. I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat nothing and I'm not going to embellish anything. So, once again, I'd like to end my videos with all with a big thank you and shout out to everyone who's been watching my videos and subscribing and like. If you haven't done it yet, please do so and hit that notifications button because I don't want you to miss not one episode, man. I love this. I'm having fun. Uh, it's a good hobby and uh, it's killing time. That's right. So until the next episode, y'all, death I bring. Rah!